Pastor David here. I wanted to answer the question with you. Are there more gods than one? Is there multiple authorities in the world? Are people allowed to answer to whatever god they find? Or is there only one god? Uh, the Bible presents clearly an answer to that question. Are there more gods than one? There is only one true and living God. There is only one living and true God. That's the answer that the Bible unmistakably presents. So I want to read some passages for you and unpack that a little bit. Deuteronomy 6, 4, God tells Israel, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then he calls for them to have a, a wholehearted, whole person devotion to that one God. In Jeremiah 10, 10, it says this, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal king. All right? Describes God as the true God, the living God. And I'll read for you Psalm 96, verses 4 through 5. It says, For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. On this verse, you hear the word God used twice. God and gods. The Lord and gods. This is because there are small g, lowercase g, uh, gods described in the Bible. There are uh, idols that represent, or we could even say pretend to be gods. In fact, God goes to great lengths in Isaiah and other places to mock these so-called gods who have eyes but can't see, ears but can't hear, feet but can't walk. They can't do anything for themselves. In, in contrast, God made the heavens, right? God is the creator of everyone and everything. He is self-existent and sustains all things. There's also, though, not just idols, people pretending that a little piece of wood or a, a gold statue or something like that is a god, something to be worshipped. But there are also another type of small g gods, gods as in spiritual beings. There are times in the scripture where the, the word gods can refer to spiritual beings like angels or demons. But they are not the true and living God because the true and living God is different from them in that he is creator and they are created. He sustains them and they are sustained. He is eternal. They began when he created them. They will find their accountability in his determination and judgment, his end. He is infinite and limitless in all of his greatness, and they are finite, right? That God is unchanging, and he is independent uh, of any influence. He's the sovereign king. There is only one living and true God. That's what the scripture presents again and again. So there is no option in our neighborhoods. There is only one God in Lincoln Park. Now, there are many small-g gods. There are all kinds of rival gods, whether they're figurines uh, of Buddha or there are false systems of worship, like, a, like the, the way that Islam has pro uh, propped up Allah as a farce of a god, or the way that we worship many other things that don't claim to be gods in a religious sense, but we worship uh, our families or our independence or our money or our vacations, or our food, or whatever it is. We are prone to worship. God has made us worshipers. And so we're often often calling things God that are not God. In fact, that's what Romans 1 tells us, is that, that the natural path of sinful humanity is to instead is to replace the glory that the only one and true living God deserves with get by giving that to something else something made in the image of reptiles or of humans or whatever we're always trying to make idols into the true and living God though they cannot be and that is part central to the problem of humanity that we have not given the one true and living God the glory he deserves. Really, there are, there are not options in front of any of us for who we, will, we should worship. God is graciously, patiently allowing people to choose who they will worship, but those choices won't be without consequence because the choices are not equal 
It's not as though you can pick any God to serve and it's all a good choice, an equally valid option for worship. There is one living and true God, the God of the Bible who has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've talked about the fact that there is one what, God, and three who's, the person's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll unfold more about how there is one God who exists in three persons later on in videos that unpack the Trinity, but for now we need to know that there is only one living and true God who deserves our worship and who created all things and sustains them now. Praise the mountain fixed upon it Mount of God's unchanging love